Hi, my name is Jake Doust. Today I'm going to be doing a lesson on figures of speech in the English language. So let's not waste any time and get started straight away. Now you might be thinking figures of speech, oh, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, please don't be. Figures of speech we actually use in everyday life. Um, it's one of those things that people think only fall in poetry. And yes, poetry is not everyone's cup of tea, but we actually use figures of speech in our everyday lives more than you think we do. So before we jump into the fun part of it, let's do the bit of the boring side and um, <laughs> go through what figures of speech actually are. So firstly, we have two sets of meaning in life. Well, in the English language, we have literal meaning and then we have our figurative meaning. So literal meaning is when something is what it means. So I broke my arm. The, if my arm is broken. There is no question about it. Literally, it's broken, right? Then we have our figurative meaning where I say, oh, my arm, it feels like it's going to fall off. Okay, now that's an exaggeration. Okay, we don't really mean that, but it just feels that way. So we over-exaggerate. Now, your figures of speech are categorized and um, they fit into these five categories. We have comparisons where we compare things. We have our contradictions where um, they are contradicting, they're the, kind of the opposites of each other. We have our sound devices, which is any type of audio, so sound, okay, music, that kind of thing. Um, exaggerations where we make things seem bigger than what they are. Understatements where we take things that are very important and we make them seem less important. And then we have our uncategorized ones where it's kind of like um, they don't fit into a place like your puns, for example. Okay, so that is your categories. Now you will see I have given you a drop down for each one. You're more than welcome to go through that on your own. Okay, and if you do get lost, remember we have the video breakdown at the bottom, which I'll get to in a minute. But let's jump straight into the activity. Now I'm not going to do every single um, song or figure of speech here just because of the time limit, but um, we're going to have a little bit of fun with some of the obvious ones, right? So the first one I really want to do is um, a simile. Now, you might be thinking a simile is quite obvious, okay? But it does trick a lot of people because a simile and a metaphor are actually the same thing. We just look for two different things. So they're both comparing two, um, thing, two opposite things, so things that are different in each other. But simile makes use of the word like or as, whereas your metaphor makes you use of the words is and are. Okay, so let's take a quick listen to a simile. So let's find the simile in the song. Love to see you shine in the night like the diamond you are. Okay, so there it is, like the diamond you are. Very sweet, it's comparing him to a diamond or her or him, which are black or white. <laughs> okay, and then we have our metaphor. So we had that like there in the simile. So let's take a listen to the metaphor. Then you're left in the dust unless I stuck by you. You're a sunflower. All right, so you're a sunflower. You are a sunflower. So yeah, we had like simile and you are metaphor. Okay. Then let's like listen to our personification now. Personification can get very tricky at times, but we're going to do this the simple way. It's when we give inanimate objects, so things that might not necessarily be human-like, okay? I say non-human because it could be an animal, and we give it a human-like quality, okay? So um, let's take a listen to this example, and then you'll see what I mean. The city's going to break my heart. The city's gonna love me, then leave me alone. Okay, so the city's gonna break my heart, it's gonna love me, and then leave me alone. The city is not a person, it cannot do that. It cannot break your heart, it cannot leave you alone. Okay, it is just us giving the city a human personality, and therefore we use the word personification. Right, so I'm gonna jump into a hyperbole. Now, hyperbole is when we over exaggerate something to make a point, which is most of our lives. So let's take a listen to this one. Call me what you want to, I'll be what you want to, I've been here a thousand times. Okay, we've all heard that a million times. See, I just used a hyperbole. Okay, you cannot do something a thousand times, although it feels like a thousand times. It's an exaggeration. 
Right, so I'm going to jump over these next couple ones, like your automatic peer. The example is then, feel free to go and have a, a listen. Um, I'm also going to jump over alliteration. I want to go into um, a sonnet. Now, a sonnet is our sound that we are using. So it is when we repeat that vowel sound within a word. So it's not necessarily at the front like the alliteration, but it's it's the sound of vowels in the middle there. So let's take a listen to this very popular song. Did you capture? Just let it slip. Yo. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom spaghetti. Okay. Right. So sweaty, weak, okay, heavy, sweater already. That EA is being repeated right throughout the song. Okay. And that gives us the assonance sound, right? Then we have our oxymoron. Now, I'm not going to play the song because I want to um, get, like, move on a little bit. But we have a, a very good contradiction here. Um, so we have, for example, two words that don't clash, like bittersweet or anything along those lines. Okay. Um, that's what we mean when we talk about oxymoron. Feel free to go and take a listen to the song. Very good song. <laughs> And then the last one that I'm going to take a look at, because rhyming is rhyming, is irony. Now, irony can be a little bit tricky for everybody, but I like to explain it kind of like Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong, but it's also um, in the sense of reality and what it's supposed to be. Okay, So it's kind of a mix between those two. So let's take a listen to this song. And isn't it ironic, don't you think? It's like rain. Okay, so it's a free ride when you've already paid. Okay, that's called Murphy's Law. It's, ir it's ironic because you finally pay for something and then, you know, it's actually free. <laughs> okay, but that sums up pretty much our lesson on figures of speech. Now, ladies and gents, if you are still confused by the end of this lesson, please make sure to go and check out this beautiful video that I have made for you out of my own courtesy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, you guys always get these, right? So please feel free to go and um, take a listen to this. You'll see I break down everything for you guys from the start to each category. But that is it from me. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.